So, welcome to the video that's about encaustic color and encaustic medium. This is the secret with encaustic. What is it that really makes encaustic encaustic? Well, of course, it's the wax. I'm going to talk about different kind of waxes and what importance they have in encaustic. And this is even more essential in Europe because encaustic in America is just encaustic, but not in Europe. Europe is two kind of different things here with an iron. Mm. And that's because encaustic in history is a little bit complicated. Here in Europe, this kind of encaustic was the first one to arrive, and it was used quite differently than the American method. You can see here the wax blocks that I bought from the beginning. I thought, this is encaustic, right? It says encaustic on the box, but it wasn't right. The wax in this box is for low heat tools. What is that? Well, I'm going to show you the difference. The low heat tools is actually the iron. It's not meant to use with a hot plate and a torch. So this little wax box you see here, they have no demo resin in it and it's made for just the iron technique. It's brilliant for that technique, but it's not for the American technique or the high heat technique, whatever you call it, but it's not the same technique because the demo resin, that is the heart in encaustic. I know some artists doesn't use demo resin in their encaustic art, but they have to use something else instead that makes the wax a little bit harder and to tolerate a little bit higher temperatures as well. So I will take this box for low heat encaustic and put it away for now. So what kind of wax are you going to use for this technique then? Well, I'm going to show you this little bag here from R&F and they make great products and here's one of them. It's ready-made encaustic medium. You can do it on your own, but it's simpler in the beginning to just buy a bag of this. But if you're going to continue to paint, it's much cheaper to do it on your own. And of course, I live in Europe, as you know, and products from America is really, really both hard and expensive to buy here in Europe. So I prefer to make my own medium. And it's not rocket science, it's not hard at all. You have to buy some good beeswax and preferably beeswax that is bleached because beeswax is pretty yellow so the bleach one is a little bit whiter but be careful that the bleached beeswax is bleached with something organical or mechanical that it's not chemical wow a lot of hard words there the chemical bleach beeswax can have residues from chemicals so you don't want to breathe in when it's heated, right? So you can use yellow beeswax that's not been bleached but not for something that you want to have really white. And the recipe for this is also in my course. You can download it there. I will make a movie someday when I want to. But right now it's not really hard. You just melt some beeswax with damaresin in some kind of one to six proportions or one to eight proportions as much as you want to dammer in the beeswax. And well, there you have your encaustic on medium. And here you see my pucks that I make from my own medium. And I use a muffin pan. It's simplest, I think. If you want to pop it out of the pan, it's easy. If it doesn't pop out, you can just freeze it a little in a moment. And you can see that in the bottom of the box there is some debris, but that is quite simple to get rid of. I just heat the bottom a little bit with my torch, and then I can simply just scrape it off and throw away the debris, and then I have perfect clear medium to paint with. And if I would compare to this how much money I actually save, at least half the price, if I want to buy ready-made encaustic medium than if I do it myself. And if I compare with colors, where well, this is my own colors and not RNF, I will save maybe five times the money if making my own colors than buying them. So you know it's a huge difference to buy and making this on your own. So I really recommend that even if you buy medium, you make your own colors and that's what I'm going to show you here a little bit. 
but first about medium some people have a big large pot with medium constantly heating but you don't need that when you're making small pictures so I choose to take one puck and keep it melt in my jar here and always keep the temperature right you know below 90 degrees of Celsius or 200 Fahrenheit always 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 very important here is my clear medium melting nicely and I prefer to have two pots of clear medium because when I'm painting I'm using one of the pots and I use it up and simultaneously I can melt some more medium in the other jar I have here on my hot plate. And besides the clear medium I always have some white color going on and here you can see the white color. So what kind of pots or jars can you use to melt your medium in? Well this is tuna fish and that's great but watch out so there's no plastic inside of it because heating up plastic you know no that can be nasty. So find some nice jars or food cans or whatever you can find that suits for melting some wax in it. Make sure what's also good that it has a flat bottom so that the heat from the hot plate can easily go into the can you're using. And this is how I organize my hot plate. Now let's see some color over here. I have my little stash and you can see I take this one with a, quite much yellow in it and you can see what I'm using here is paper muffin cup holders. It's mm, something that I have found out actually is my own technique because I had these metal jars everywhere and you cannot stash them and they're practical. This I can just pop up my colors like that and I can melt them directly on my hot plate when I want to do that. That's great, isn't it? Or I can take my little paper cup here and place it on the hot plate and I can melt some more colors if I want that. And here you can see some of my colors. I try to order them a little bit in different color combinations so it's easy for me to find when I want to paint. All these colors are colored with oil colors exception from the white one which I use ordinary powder pigment because when talking about coloring things if you take just pigments they are cheaper but if you want to buy a lot of it uh, the jars are quite expensive so that's why all the colors are cheaper because each tube is more uh, cheap so I use the powder for white because it's more economical right and but you can use oil color for that in the beginning as well the only downside with oil colors is it settles at the bottom of the can so you have to stir it every now and then so you don't get the oil color on the brush because it's a sticky mess and you will just make this sticky mess on your painting and that's not so fun. So watch out with oil colors and stir it often, right? And something more about oil colors. Mm, there's a big discussion on forums and things like that if you actually can use oil colors to make your own encaster colors. And I'm not just an art teacher, I'm actually a science teacher and RNF is a great company. Go to their website, read a lot about encaustic there. They do scientific experimental things. So it's no problem at all to use oil colors in encaustic medium. It's great, it's great if you keep under 30% oil color to your wax. So keep it under 30% and actually you don't even use 30%. You maybe use 10% because oil colors they have so much pigment in them so you won't you need to use more. You will you will find that out on your own when you make your colors. And here's the other way I make some colors. Just pour some encaustic medium on the hot plate and take some oil color and this is water mixable oil colors they work as well no problem with that just don't mix in water in it all right do never ever ever use acrylic colors it's plastic it's bad for heating up it's bad for your health it's bad for your painting don't use acrylic colors so use oil colors any brand works no problem with that 
So just go with it and have a lot of fun. And here I'm going to show how I use this color to make my own encaustic paint. Well, I use a spatula. And why that is great because it's metallic and it's easy to wipe off. But I can also put different kind of colors here on my spatula. And yeah, I can have better control of the mixing of my colors. What kind of color I want, what kind of shades I want, what kind of hues I want. This is a great way to make different kind of nuances in the colors because this is you have control over it right in the beginning i had a lot of different jars you know and if you want to make a big painting with different colors you know you have to have no one griddle two griddle three griddle. you're gonna have hundreds of different jars and that will make me crazy so i want to have better control of exactly what you i want if you want to make a portrait or you want to make a landscape painting this is actually the better way to do it and when you're mixing the color actually at the hot plate, it gets a little bit warmer than it gets in the can. And this is actually a super tips because it takes a little bit longer for the color to solidify on your painting. It gives you a little bit more time to work with it. <laughs> and you will understand why that really matters in a while. And the hot plate is very easy to clean up. Just take a piece of paper and just wipe off the wax. Mind your fingers so you don't get a burn. But actually the hot plate is only 90 degrees so you won't get a really that kind of burn from it. And not even from the wax because it cools so really fast. So there's no problem with that. And here in my small paper cups, you can see I have made just small amounts of color. That's great because I can save them to next time, mix them up and do what I want. Here I can actually see the oil color at the bottom of the wax. Can you see the different shades? And that's why you have to stir them well when you heat them up again. Well, well, I think that covers it about wax and wax colors. Hmm, next time let's see what that will be about.